Thank you for joining me in How Does Career Info, the program where career professionals from across the globe meet to empower you to succeed. This program is brought to you by Right Career Fit. Feeling stuck or uncertain in your career path? Have that very important career conversation with a career professional. Book your appointment with any of the guests interviewed on this program or with me, Hoda, at rightcareerfit.com. Thank you for joining me in Season 2 of Huda's Career Info, your career program where career professionals from across the globe share career tips and personal stories to help you successfully navigate your career. I am Hoda, your host. I look forward to another season of career chats with international career professionals who will inspire you to take your journey to the next level. Ready to meet this week's guest? to me is a pathway to a goal that is challenging. You will make mistakes. However, you need to learn from your mistakes in order to get and achieve your goal. Your network is your net worth. Networking will get you the job. Absolutely. One thing that the uh, pandemic has taught us is that you can leverage technology to build your network. It's not about who you know, but who knows you. You need to always continue your education. People get hired for their hard skills, but they get fired for their soft skills. My guest today is Denis Gravel. Denis Gravel is the co-founder and chief strategist at Devant, a subsidiary of Academia Group, leading career and skills development projects in collaboration with industry and academia. Denis has led workforce development projects focusing on newcomers and international students. An experienced educator and trendsetter, his focus lies primarily in workforce development and skills training in the age of disruption. Denis has held leadership positions in adult learning and workforce development at Seneca, Humber, and Fanshawe Colleges. He earned his BA from Western and his Master of Education from the Ontario Institute for Studies in Education at the University of Toronto. In our chat, Denis details the meaning and value of having various skills and a large network. I hope our chat motivates you to be resilient and enriches your career knowledge. Are you ready for this? Let's go! Thank you, Denis Gravel, for agreeing to have this career conversation. Denis, part of this show is sharing personal definitions of key career terms. And you chose to define the term resiliency. I am looking forward to hearing your definition. Resiliency is one of these tough words. Uh, you know, uh, some people think resiliency uh, is being able to, uh, to go into a trampoline and, bunt, uh, and jump up and down. Um, and uh, you have a lot of highs, you have a lot of lows, and, but uh, overall you're jumping on trampoline and you're having fun. Um, uh, I think of resiliency more so uh, as um, uh, when I was in Kenya, uh, I, I had an opportunity to, to, to climb a, uh, it wasn't uh, the Kilimanjaro, but it was 
uh, it, it was it was called the Seven Peaks, and it was a challenge because uh, I didn't have a I didn't have a map, uh, and I didn't I knew I, I could see the top, but I just didn't know which path to take. So for me, I had to become resilient because I had to kind of look at my spatial uh, resolution. So, okay, this is where I need to go. Then I had to ask for information. Um, uh, some information was right, some information was wrong. Uh, I had to go up very steep climbs and then other times I had, uh, the path was, uh, was not as arduous. However, because of being resilient and knowing that I had a goal to attain, I was able to get there, but I had a lot of challenges getting there. And I also made a lot of mistakes, but I learned from my mistakes. And, uh, and out of that challenge, I, I, uh, I reached my goal. So basically a resilience uh, to me is a pathway to a goal that is challenging. You will make mistakes. However, you need to learn from your mistakes in order to get and achieve your goal. I like this definition and particularly because you mentioned that you had a goal in order to remain resilient and trying to accomplish it. Uh, having a goal uh, is very important. I think we all Absolutely. can both, yeah. Uh, then you, like many professionals, you have transitioned from a different career path before coming to the career development field. Uh, can you tell the audience about your background and also what led you to co-found Devon? I have a very ec eclectic career. Uh, career path. Uh, my very first career, I was a nuclear medicine tech. I graduated from uh, the Michener Institute in Toronto, uh, received a diploma in nuclear medicine technology, and, um, and I went to work uh, in, uh, in London, Ontario, and I was very fortunate uh, because I worked on the very first MRI machine. Uh, so um, uh, it, 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 it was at a time when medical imaging was uh, was becoming quite in vogue uh, because of the computer power and the um, uh, in the uh, ability to process uh, images not through a, a, an X-ray film but through through the computer. So uh, my first career path was a nuclear medicine technologist, but I soon I, I soon found that um, uh, I, I wasn't fulfilled. I wanted to do uh, more than just becoming just being a nuclear medicine tech. So I pursued my education at Western part-time. Uh, and it took me uh, uh, about eight years, but I finally uh, got my degree at Western while working nuclear medicine. And, um, uh, and then decided, well, you know, I would really like to do a master's. And it was a toss up between biophysics because of medical imaging or education. And um, when I was making my decision, um, I was, uh, there was this word, uh, this new technology that came about the internet in Huda. You remember the internet, you know, it was this mystique things where computers were interconnected and, and through your computer, you have access to all of this resources of information. So I decided to do a master's in education and I, and, and I focused on uh, uh, how to integrate uh, technology into teaching and learning. So by 1988, which is you know uh, uh, really early in the internet career, I was able to uh, to start teaching at Fanshawe and using the internet as a as a way to augment what I was doing in the classroom. So that's where I started the passion of uh, of innovation and using my creativity and critical thinking skills that I learned uh, working uh, in a hospital. Um, so sh uh, shortly after doing that, that work and, and, and teaching, uh, uh, I thought, well, the only way I can affect change is to work in administration. So my career path took me from being uh, uh, teaching then going into administration at Benchar College, then I moved over to Humber College and moved over to Seneca College. And throughout that pathway, I was able to um, uh, 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 hone down my skill as a facilitator but also explore things that I was passionate about. And one of which was um, how do we get people uh, who have been uh, de-skilled, unskilled, marginalized um, uh, into the workforce? And uh, that brought me to Devon. Um, uh, and uh, the reason why uh, uh, I co-founded Devon with, with an awesome team 
is uh, there was a gap between international students coming to Canada, going to colleges and university. And in the last uh, uh, 10 years, six out of 10 of them wanted to stay in Canada and to become uh, permanent residents, uh, uh, get their permanent residency and then becoming Canadian citizens. However, they lack the tools uh, in order to find a job. So that kind of gives you, you know, from the nuclear medicine to teaching, to being an academic administrator, and then forming uh, this, uh, this innovative company, uh, helping uh, colleges and universities, uh, helping their international students to stay, work, and succeed in Canada. That's a very interesting path. And uh, I like the transitions from different fields. It really implies a lot of reflection on, on your day-to-day -day things and how you are always seeking for your, to look for your interests to continue working. And, and with and, that, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and, 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 uh, and you know this as well as I do, uh, in order to be successful in any career, you need to have passion. And if you're not passionate about what you're doing, then you need to find what, what is your passion. And, and again, you go back to that path of resiliency. You need a goal. And, uh, and to get there may be tough, but you're going to build resiliency. The more you do it, the more resilient you become. And you also tell yourself, hey, you know what, I can do this. Absolutely. So revisiting the goals as well becomes important, is that am I mm -hmm. still passionate about what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. And with that in mind, uh, you know, I get a question that what motivates you to keep going every day? And there is a bit of that reflection and asking these questions. But can you share with uh, the audience what motivates you to keep working as part of the of Deva? It, it has to do with passion. Uh, when you believe you're doing the right thing uh, and you're doing it ethically, uh, you're doing it for uh, uh, not for selfish reasons, but more so uh, because you have a goal and uh, you wake up in the morning and you say, hey, uh, uh, I, re I really enjoy what I am doing. Uh, it adds meaning to your life. Um, and it's no different than uh, any of the career practitioners uh, uh, consultants that are out there. If you have passion, you're going to succeed. Absolutely, absolutely agree. You mentioned in your previous answer, uh, talking about international students who do not have the right skills uh, to stay and work in Canada. So what advice do you give today to the international youth looking to navigate their career path in Canada? Well, first off, I'd like to say that uh, it's not that they don't have the skills. Uh, it, it, it's something even more uh, more foundational uh, that we all face. Um, the world of information, if you were to look at it as a big circle, uh, and let's say that's Google, you cannot know everything there is to know about uh, uh, about all the constructs that are out there. So international students come to Canada. Their focus is: I've got a study permit. Um, it, it's very expensive and I need to succeed academically. But the world that they do not know is the world of how to get a job, the whole career development piece, because they come from a construct from their home country. They assume there's certain assumptions that they make. One is, well, a good grade is going to get me a job. Uh, 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 my, uh, my academic achievements are going to get me a job. And certainly those are true. But from uh, getting a job in Canada, there is a process. And if you follow the process, if you understand the process, you will get a job. So our, um, uh, the way that we approach this is we want to get the international students from a world of, I don't know what I don't know, to a space where I know what I don't know. And once they know what they don't know, they can do something about it. So we work closely with, with uh, 20 institutions across Canada. Uh, post-secondary institutions. And what we do for, uh, for those institutions, for their career services, is get the international students to a space where now I know what I need, and they can go back to career services much more informed. And now they know exactly the questions they need to ask for support from career services, as opposed to just going there and saying, I need a resume. So, so that's the construct. Now, advice that, uh, 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 that I would like to share in this, 
This works for uh, not only international students, but newcomers for any of the clients uh, th that you see in your practice. One is that your network is your net worth. Okay, so your network is your net worth. Nowadays, you need to be on LinkedIn. You need to develop your network. Um, what uh, one thing that the uh, pandemic has taught us is that you can leverage technology to build your network. Um, so there's your network is your net worth, but um, uh, it, it's also, it's not about who knows you. It's not about who you know, but who knows you. So, uh, so you need to you know, do some blogs. You need to go present. You need to go to conferences and network at conferences. You need to build that network uh, because that becomes your foundation and it builds your personal brand. So it is about really being out there for people to know who you are and uh, what you're good at. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, the case in point was how you and I met. You know, uh, it, it, it's through networking. And, it's, and if it wasn't for networking, I wouldn't be here today. And I'm sure with you, with all the great things you have done in your career, it was through your network. So your network becomes your net worth. Absolutely. And you mentioned the value of conferences. And I think that's where you and I first met. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's very good advice. Now, how do international students or newcomers uh, come to Devon? Like, do they need a special reference or do they just show up? Our, our business model is uh, we work directly with uh, colleges and universities uh, across Canada. And it's a, uh, they actually subscribe to our services. And uh, so we become uh, kind of a partner uh, along with it, the International Department and Career Services. Now, for those institutions that are uh, that are have not partnered with us, we're a relatively new company. Uh, we do have um, uh, 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 packages uh, that uh, students can uh, uh, can purchase a membership as low as ninety nine dollars for the year, where they get uh, coaching, they get access to all of our uh, career development resources. Um, for uh, international students, we uh, we do have a lot of free webinars uh, monthly. We have at least three or four free uh, webinars, and um, uh, uh, so that's that's how we're building that uh, the, that community through through partner schools, but also through uh, individuals looking for specific help. But Huda, Huda, the the big construct here is going from a world, I don't know what I don't know, to a world that now I know what I don't know and you can do something about it. And the best example is, um, I don't know how to fly a plane, but I know where to get the information on how to fly a plane. And once I have that information, I can now fly a plane. I agree with you 100%. I mean, that's why I do this program is because you need to know stuff. And if you know stuff, you can succeed in your career uh, mm -hmm. and you know accomplish what you thought out to accomplish. Uh, mm -hmm. So what are you, you have been transitioning through different career paths. Uh, so what are some of the ideas going through your mind today or current involvement that you think the audience um, should know? Well, I, I'm doing, a, I've always done a lot of work in the area of uh, labor market trends. Uh, in not, I'm not an economist, I'm not a labor market specialist, but I do read a lot and through my network, I, I network with a lot of people, I hear employers, talking about um, uh, what's happening in the world of work. And I would like to share uh, uh, my, five, my five top trends in the labor market. And one is um, uh, employability is based on the ability for you to demonstrate that you have the skills to do the job. So it's all about skills. Uh, employers nowadays, there's a labor sort, uh, a shortage, but it's more of a skills shortage because employers are looking for specific skills. They're not interested in, in, uh, in the, um, uh, the degree or the diploma or the post-grad diploma. They're interested, are you able to do this job that I'm looking for? I've got a big contract. I need to, do, I, I need to produce this piece of software. I, this is what I'm looking for. So you need to demonstrate that you have the skills, not to say, I know how to do it, but you need to say, this is how I have developed my skill and here are examples on how I've used those skills. So that's number one, to remain competitive. And this is something I'm sure that uh, your audience uh, 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 does this. You need to adopt a continuous learning approach and 
industry certifications. So you need to adopt lifelong learning. You need to always continue your education. Uh, and there's a lot of great uh, uh, resources out there. Your network is one of them, but uh, you, uh, uh, you need uh, to, to, to be on that pathway of continuously learning and to obtain industry certifications. Number three, human skills, also uh, uh, known as soft skills or power skills or business skills are more important than hard skills. People get hired for their hard skills, but they get fired for their soft skills. And, and if, if there's something career development practitioners need to do is to, is to highlight to uh, their clients that you need, to, you need to illustrate your human skills in your resume and your cover letter, because that is as important, if not more important than hard skills. And one of the notions that is coming out of uh, the, the, the pandemic is, is cognitive diversity. And cognitive diversity, I'll ask you, Huda, what do you think cognitive diversity is? Well, it's that awareness of our, our surroundings and the social, for sure, social and cultural. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And cognitive diversity is also the ability to work with people who think differently than you. Because if we all think alike, if you think about this, if uh, 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 we all like to work with people who think like you, but that's not how you become in, uh, innovative. You need to work with people who think differently and they, uh, they, and, and they approach and they solve problems differently than you, because that's the only way that you're going to get innovation. And, um, and, and that's hard because we all, like, we all like to be with people. Oh, yo, you think, yeah, you totally agree with me. But, <laughs> Absolutely, but, yes. But you, uh, you need to embrace cognitive diversity. Um, uh, number four, networking will get you the job. Absolutely. You know, uh, uh, the, the days of looking at a job posting and applying for a job, that's still, that, w that will always exist. However, it's the networking that will get you the job. And uh, uh, virtual interviewing is here to stay. Companies uh, coming out of the pandemic have realized that doing face-to-face -face interviews is time consuming, takes a lot of resources. They can do this as well uh, 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 better, especially for uh, first or second uh, level interviews through uh, virtual interview. And um, what is uh, number five is uh, the, the pandemic has, uh, has made employers rethink the uh, the, the value of education and, uh, and from the education uh, providers is they need to seize the opportunity to disrupt and transform education because it's all about skills. Um, you're hearing more and more about you know, micro credentials and micro certifications and badging and stackable uh, uh, certifications. And it's because now you're chunking down learning into these discrete chunks called micro certifications. And those are the skills employers are looking for. So if I was an employer, I got a big contract uh, to, uh, 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 to, to develop a piece of software and, and I need somebody who can, uh, who can lead a team and I'm looking for agile scrum, I'm looking for scrum master. So that's the skill I'm looking for. And when I search, I'm not going to be looking for, this, for the credential, I'm going to look at do you have experience? Do you have the skill? Can you demonstrate the skill that you've led a, a software development team using agile principles? So those are my five top trends in the labor market. Uh, that's the very, these are, I see them as well. And I totally agree with you, particularly the um, soft skills or human skills. Uh, I was reading a recent report how um, they added a skill and it, that you mentioned is the cultural awareness skill and how to behave and how to do um, be sensitive to others um, cultures not just I'm from one country you're from another country but really we even within Canada understanding the different values yeah, and Huda, uh, the other piece that kind of uh, doves, uh, doves, uh, tails with uh, that concept is um, the remote worker who now has to build relationships through through zoom it's much more difficult doing it through technology than it is uh, being face to face so you need to have uh, that cognitive diversity, that cultural diversity, that communication skills, in order to 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 be part of an effective, high performance work team. 
Absolutely. Can we summarize them in five points uh, real quickly? Uh, so perhaps continue to build your knowledge and share that, share your knowledge. Uh, lifelong learning, which is the definitely important. Uh, developing your human skills or soft skills and the value of networking. And I love what you said, your network is your net worth. This is definitely uh, valuable and uh, calling on educational institutions to disrupt the education system mm -hmm. and um, address those soft skills for, from my perspective, definitely. Uh, these were all the questions I have for you today, Denis. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to add? I mean, we shared great advice in this last question, but feel free to share your thoughts to wrap up. Um, I, I'm going back to labor market trends. Uh, uh, one of the biggest trends uh, I, I see uh, are two other skills employers are looking for. One is sales skills. Um, and one would say, well, sales skills. Well, uh, there's no diploma in sales. There's no degree in sales. There's no postgraduate program in sales. Sales has always been kind of embedded there. But when you take a look at it, we, we, we are all salespeople to a certain extent. And you're not born to be in sales, no different than I'm not born to be a doctor or an engineer. But sales skills are so critical, especially in post-pandemic, in the fifth industrial revolution, because companies are developing new ways of doing things. And if they cannot sell their product, they're going to be doomed from the get-go. So employers are looking for a workforce that is you know, the cognitive diversity, the human skills. They're looking for the hard skills, but they're also looking for sales skills. And the other big skill is digital skills. And digital skills is just not, oh, I know how to use PowerPoint or uh, I know how to use Excel or Word. It's Excel skills in particular. And when I, and when I look at, um, we have a piece of software called Burning Glass, and we're able to take a look at um, what, what skills employers are looking for in all the job postings across Canada. And, and um, I, I just did a little project, and um, uh, six out of 10 employers are looking for Excel skills uh, as part of the digital skills package. And it's not just, I know how to use Excel. You, it, they're looking for data analytics and data visualization within Excel. So how to construct a pivot table, how to, uh, how, how to aggregate data and then put it into, uh, into a chart. Those are two skills that uh, employers are looking for. So digital skills and sales skills on top of the human skills. That is very, very interesting. And then I think it's so it's easier nowadays to develop them with the micro credentials and the book. Absolutely. That's, uh, that, that's, a whole, that's a whole value of a micro credential because you can take sales skills and then you can you can chunk it down into what are the different uh, components that make up sales skills and then and then you and then you take those components and then you add them up, you stack them, and now you have uh, industry certification. Well, I always tell my clients is that in a way you are trying to sell yourself when you network and Absolutely. definitely sharing your skills and talking about them is, is one way to practice, I guess, that sales skill. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you so much for your time, Denis. I really appreciate your willingness to have this great conversation and share your knowledge. Well, thank you so much uh, Huda, for, for the invitation. And, uh, and uh, I know our paths will continue to cross. And if your audience has any questions in particular, they can reach me through LinkedIn. They just have to search me uh, using my name. I'm always available to, uh, to share whatever information uh, I have. Thank you so much, Denis. And I look forward to further collaborations as well. Thank you so much, Huda. been listening to Huda's Career Info, the program where career professionals from across the globe join me to empower you to succeed. Thank you for joining me and Denis Gavel in this episode of Huda's Career Info 2022. I hope the career tips shared by Denis inspire you to find your passion and have the resiliency to pursue it. 
you can connect with Denis Gravel on LinkedIn. Please remember that you can listen to Hodas Get It Info since it's also dropped as a podcast. To let me know if you are interested in an opportunity to talk about your work, you can send me a direct message on my website, writecareerfit.com, where you can also sign up for my newsletter to stay up to date on the latest episodes. Remember to like, subscribe, Share and follow me on social media for more career info. I am your host, Hoda. Until next time, stay inspired and keep moving in productive ways. Mm-hmm.